Chapter 5 is about polynomial functions. In this lesson, we will learn how to name a polynomial both by degree and by number of terms. We will learn how to graph polynomial functions and describe the end behavior of that graph. And then we will be able to look at the expressions and interpret the different parts, such as the terms, the factors, and the coefficients, and see what they all mean. To begin with, we're going to name the polynomials. So the smallest possible polynomial is the monomial. The monomial is made up of a single term. So we could have just a plain number like 5, and that would be a monomial. Or we could have a variable, such as x cubed, and that's a monomial. Or we can combine them, and we could have something like 5x squared y, and that is a monomial. Monomials are the terms with different pieces multiplied together. So the degree of a monomial, if there's only one variable, is named based on the highest exponent. So since this is an x to the third, this is a degree 3, which could be called a cubic. A polynomial is when you uh, have just a single monomial, can be called a polynomial, or you can take several monomials and add them together, and that makes a monomial. Each monomial within the polynomial is called a term. So down here on the ex bottom, we have this example, and we have four monomials put together, so this has four terms. The degree of the polynomial, if there's only one variable like this one, just x's, no y's, is the degree on the highest term. So this term, the first term here, has a fifth degree to the fifth power, so this makes it the entire polynomial is a fifth degree po polynomial. So if you have a polynomial with many parts, um, to write the polynomial down in standard form, you put the parts in order according to their exponent. So the highest exponent is first on down to the one with no, no variable at all. And then you can name each of the different monomials within the polynomial by their exponent. So this first one is an x to the third, so this makes it a cubic term. And the x squared piece is called the quadratic term. And the x to the first term is the linear term, and then the term with no variable at all is called the constant term. When you put them all together, this is called a cubic polynomial because the name of the polynomial goes by the highest. Term. And remember, you're naming by the highest exponent. When we get to class, I would like to practice by naming these polynomials by degree and number of terms. If you would like to do that ahead of time, you can hit pause and try it right now. So here are a couple of exa examples that we would like to classify by degree and number of terms. But first, we have to put them in standard form. So example A, in standard form, we would line them up according to their exponents. So 9x squared would go first, and then the linear term, and then the constant term. So now classifying this by degree, since the highest exponent is a 2, this is a second degree. And second degree polynomials are called quadratics. So this would be a quadratic. It should look familiar from the last chapter. If we're going to classify this by number of terms, we can see that there are three terms, the three different monomials added together. So that would make this a trinomial. This should also be a little bit of review from the last chapter. OK, in our second example, as we're trying to put this in uh, standard form, we should also combine like terms. So our highest exponent is x to the 4, so that goes first. There is no x cubed term, but there are two x squared terms, so we're going to combine these together. Negative 6x squared plus 10x would give us 4x squared. And then we can put our linear term next. Linear term is 4x. And last, we'll put our constant term. So there it is in standard form. Now for classifying by degree, this is a fourth degree because the highest exponent is a 4 here. And a fourth degree is called a quartic. 
Okay, finally, we're going to classify by number of terms. Once it is combined, you've combined the x squared terms into one, you can see that there are now four terms. If there's only one term, it's called a monomial. If there are two terms, it's called a binomial. If there are three terms, it's a trinomial. But when you get to four terms, there's no special name. So we just call this a polynomial of four terms. Okay, again, when you get to class, we're going to do an explore learning activity. If you want a head start on it, you can take a look at it because um, it's on Moodle. Or you can just go to explorelearning.com and look it up. But I just want to give you uh, a simplified version right now. If you have a linear function, the linear function, when you graph it, well, um, the parent function is just y equals x. So when you graph it, it looks like a straight line heading through the origin. If you have a quadratic, that would be something like y equals x squared. We know from the last chapter that that is a parabola parabola with the vertex at the origin. If you have a cubic, that's going to be y equals x to the third. And when you graph it, you get a line that goes something like this, also going through the origin. And finally, if you have a quartic, that would be something like y equals x to the fourth. When you graph it, it looks a lot like a quadratic. So it's just flatter on the bottom. So these are what um, the graphs generally look at like when we're dealing with polynomials. And if we were to do a fifth degree, a fifth degree would end up looking like the cubic. And a sixth degree would end up looking like the quartic. And so there's a pattern with this. So here's a table that summarizes the pattern to the end behavior. So the end behavior to a um, polynomial can be determined based on the leading coefficient and the degree. So um, copy down this table, and then we'll do a couple of examples. OK, so using your table, we can determine uh, the end behavior of this graph. So all we have to look at is right here. Everything we need to know is right at the beginning. So we know this is cubic because it's third degree. Since 3 is an odd number, we know that the ends will be going in opposite directions. One will be down, one will be up. The second thing we will look at is the 4. The 4 is called the leading coefficient because it's the coefficient on the highest term. Since the coefficient is positive, that tells you that your graph will look sort of like a linear curve, uh, a linear function that has a positive slope. So this graph is going to do something like this. Third degree, one end is down, one end is up. Since it's positive, the left end is down and the right end is up. So if we were going to describe the end behavior here, we would say it's down on the left and up on the right. Okay, um, we also want to describe the turning points. Actually, not describe, just tell how many there are. The turning points are the places where the graph changes direction. So right there, that's a turning point, and right here is another turning point. So there are two turning points. Okay, for a second example here, um, this one is a fourth degree since 4 is even, we know both ends are going in the same direction. Our leading coefficient is negative 2, so that means the two ends will be facing downward. So we might have a graph that looks something like this, but both ends will be going downward. And then the number of turning points would be one, two, three, three turning points. Our final objective for this first lesson is to graph, and we are going to save this for an in-class activity. So that's the end of lesson 5-1.